Camera rolling. It is the 5th of May 2018. I'm just, hi folks. I'm just here. I'm just weighing up some, some, uh, some lumps. Um, for some GP bowls. These are one pound. So, yeah. Fourteen, fifteen, fifteen, eighty, sixteen. Now I don't know how many of you weigh up your clay lumps, but it's a really a good idea to weigh up your clay lumps. But if you have a lump of clay with lots of little pieces of clay like this, that if you now just smack them all together, what you're going to do is get a lot of trapped air. So if you've got a lot of little pieces like that, this you want to avoid. See if you can, if you can nail it as quickly as you can to nearest to the 16 ounces or whatever it is, uh, without lots of multiple little additions, you'll find that you'll be better off in terms of not trapping air, okay? So if you do have though quite a few little pieces, just add them back into the main lump, okay? Carefully, all right? And then smack them together like what I'm doing there. Um, that's 17. Also another tip and that is when you're when you're weighing up uh, and then you're weighing up from a main lump let's say and you're taking off don't use a cutoff wire okay to cut off your pieces all right because you won't get it anywhere near the 15 ounces or the 16 ounces that you're aiming for. You won't get it anywhere near it. You're much better off just pulling it off by hand, okay? That's a good tip. Okay, there's a few lumps. Let's head over to the, to my wheel. Yeah, yeah, I need to get back on the wheel. I need some therapy. <laughs> Do you ever get like that? Some therapy. So, yeah, I'm actually. I thought what I'd do is, um, bu -bu -bu -bum. yeah. I thought what I'd do is I would have the camera where it is, and then I'm going to swing it over here in a minute. Okay, one pound of clay. I'm doing GP bowls. That's different, Simon. We never seen them before. Only about 50 times. <laughs> so I've already got a gauge set here. I was doing I was doing a few of these yesterday. So I just thought I'd just uh, go through this quickly with you. Because uh, it's useful to know how to throw a bowl. And um, a lot of people come unstuck throwing a bowl. As they do a cylinder or anything else. Until you learn the tricks. <laughs> Learn the tricks and then tricks of the trade. It's like everything, anything you do, you know, there's a way of doing it, isn't there? It's like if you've got to take the cylinder head off of your car and fiddle around, you know. Well, a mechanic knows the quick ways and the shortcuts of how to do it because he's done it 50 times before or 100 times or whatever. So he knows what, what to do and what not to do. And likewise, uh, you know, as you're throwing pots, particular forms, you you go through a certain set of motions to to arrive at your destination. And it's just really knowing what those motions are. So I'm pulling this up. Now the thing about these GP bowls is very useful functional shape to know how to throw. And it lends itself to lots of other different similar shapes. You can sort of turn a GP bowl into a kitchen bowl, into a pouring bowl, into a salad bowl. All of these things you see. Okay so I'm going down the bottom now. Now I'm widening it and pulling it up. But I've got to 
I gotta roll the rim on this one. Yeah, I roll my rims on my GP bowls because they look nice, I think, the rolled rim. And it also serves to a function to keep the keep them round, keep the 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 lip of the pot robust and strong, which it, you know you you want. These are gonna be well. I make them uh, six and a half. So let's just measure that. Yeah, that is actually six and a half now. The gauge there must have moved a touch. I'm just going to move it a little closer. Don't set your gauge too too close to the edge of the pot. Otherwise, you know it doesn't leave you much leeway when you are pulling the clay up to the gauge. Otherwise, you can, if you're not careful, you'll s smack it into the gauge. You see. So try and get the insides nicely formed, nice continuous curve, nice continuous form in the base. So sort of think about making bowls from the inside out, you know, you sort of think about the, the outside, the outside form afterwards as it were. Okay, so I take my throwing stick, now I'm going to put my throwing stick in, pushing in underneath with my fingers on the inside against the stick, you see. And then I take off the clay like that, you see. So it's kind of, I kind of call it wet trimming because I'm not trimming it when, it when it's leather hard. I'm doing it right now, you see, I'm finishing it right now. So there's no more really to do. So long as you get these right, you know, you hit them at the right time. Okay, so let's do, do, let's just leather like that. Don't forget the leather, the rims of your pots. Very important. Keeps them strong, rounded, and smooth. Okay, checking in the mirror there just to make sure we're we're on course. Are we in the picture? Are we? Yeah, more or less. All right, so have a towel handy to wipe the worst of the slurry off your fingers, hands. Take your cut-off wire, preferably a twisted cut-off wire that's the right length, so you haven't got to do all of this winding business, which is a waste of time and wrecks your wire, doesn't it? Okay, so with the wheel going round slowly, straight through like that. Okie dokie. Okay, let's just lift him off. Fingers right underneath like this, you see. Get right to the base. Don't try and lift him off like this, because you'll deform the, the lip. Don't touch the top part of the pot. You've got to only touch it at the very base. Okay, and then lift him off. We'll just put him down there for now. Okay, right. Now, let's swing the camera over here and have you follow me from this side, watching me come up to the gauge. Get this so I don't knock it. All right, so there we go. Now from the other side. Yeah, why not see things from the other side? Yeah. Why not indeed? Okay. So just put your hands on the lump of clay and just push down and just sort of 
with your pinky finger just sort of seal the lump of clay to the wheel head. It's always a good idea. Okay, and now what I do is generally I kind of cone it up like that and then I center it down. Okay, so you, you have a sort of mushroom like that, so slightly, slightly undercut. Okay, at this stage. Okay, breaking in, going straight down to the base, like that. And now, bringing that clay up like that, you see. So I go down to the base and I sort of, I just move my inside hand like this against my outside hand. Pushing in a bit and now just pulling the clay upwards. So with a, with a bowl, especially one like this that we're making to a gauge, you, what you need to do is get your height first and then get your your width okay don't get wide and then think oh I'm too low because you won't be able to get it higher then so first get height and then open down to the correct diameter that is a good tip okay pulling up pulling up like this and now I'm higher than the gauge and now I'm gonna just roll roll the lip over like that Create the rolled rim. And now I'm going to belly it and pull it out wider, out to the gauge. Are we out to the gauge yet? Somebody say yes! Six and three eighths, it's got a smidgen more to go. So now if you want to, if you're somebody out there who wants to improve your throwing, and I know that there are a lot of you out there that do, okay, what you really want to do is start throwing to a gauge. Okay, because it will really exercise you. And, um, And really, you'll really up your game a tremendous amount by doing that. Okay, just check that one more time. Six and a half, yep, good. Okay, now we're going to go in with, you can't see it from that side, I know, but my fingers are on the inside there. Okay, like that. Leather. Just make sure that he's sponged. Okay, there he is. Now, cut off wire on the wheel head, slowly through all the way. Cut off wire back there where he lives. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, let's whip him off. So there you are, you see how, how, how close he is to the gauge. Okay, that's that. Just wanted to quickly show you that. Now, here are some that I made yesterday. Uh -huh. Here are some that I made yesterday. Now, okay, so these, what you can do with these is, is have a, a, a wet sponge, uh, a damp sponge handy, and you can just push it around like that, you see? And you take your seal and just put it there like that. Okay. Damp finger. Now if you've done this right with your throwing stick here at the base, you see, this part now will be will be a cinch. It will be easy. Dee, 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 dee. So, 
Yeah, this is, you see, no trimming. Isn't that easy? No trimming, quick, easy. Just learn to do it all on the wheel when, oops, careful. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we knock some pots on the floor, it happens. <laughs> All right, take the old seal there. I always put the seal where the, let me show you, where the cutoff wire, the twisted cutoff wire leaves, it leaves a nice, that shell like pattern. And I always usually put the seal where that sort of configuration comes together. I guess I do it because Dad used to do it at home in the studio and I sort of felt, yeah, it's a nice little detail, isn't it? Just, okay, so those now, these guys, these GP bowls, you've seen me doing some wedge, some kneading up, some balling up, throwing of the GP bowl, and here is the finished, the finished object. Now these can be, you see, placed in the kiln. These are going to be raw fired as well, no bisque. Oh, that's a good news, isn't it? Oh, that bisque lock. I'm through with this for a time. But you see how how the rolled rim now how it lends itself to to stacking. Okay. Um, Now all I do need to do is is not is not knock the wheel, isn't it? But um, yeah, just to so that where they meet is good and strong, secure, a nice place for the for them to meet up, as it were, and it keeps it nice and it keeps it nice and round. You see. They don't go out of shape. Okay, there's a few things to keep me busy. I hope, hopefully, that that's been of some help to you. Um, yeah, go to my go to my website, simonlichpottery.com. Workshops, yes, I've got uh, a few workshops coming up in the middle of this month. Coming up now and then ongoing into June, etc, etc. So if you want to come on a Keep Practicing workshop, maybe improve your, your, your throwing ability, learn how to repeat throw, okay? Uh, there's nothing like working to a gauge and repeat throwing. It is the absolute number one method to really come to grips with the clay and really getting the utmost out of the clay that you possibly can, bringing it up to the gauge, and it, it teaches you to, to distribute the clay, so you, so you don't have these heavy, thick bottoms, and all like thin, wafer thin at the very, very top. Which is very common for people who uh, are not skilled, really. That's a common occurrence. Okay, there it is, folks. Uh, above all, keep practicing. See you around town. Bye.